Something I'm always told by new gardeners or those who have just purchased their own property is it's okay for you to grow your own vegetables with all the land that you have. But in this episode, I've teamed up with Miracle Grow to be able to show you that with a small patio of just 10 foot by 10 foot, you can grow all your own nutrient dense organic vegetables for use in your own home. I'm Tony O'Neill and this is Simplify Gardening where I show you how to garden in a simpler way. If you want that perfect garden to relax in or just want to grow your own nutrient dense foods then start now by clicking the subscribe button and the bell icon then click all to be notified each time I release new content just like this. When you start your garden it's a great idea to start off in a small garden because it allows you to hone your gardening skills so that you can get better. Now, this is why I am using this space here, which is a 10 foot by 10 foot patio. It's shaded, but we can still grow really good quality vegetables here. And we're going to show you how to grow nutrient dense vegetables. In this day and age, we're all looking for better health and nutrition. And it's important for me to remain organic. Now, I want to be able to still have a productive garden while being organic and having good nutrient dense foods for me and my family. Now, it's also important for me for it to be quick, easy and low maintenance. And to do this, I am going to use pots and containers of all shapes and sizes. Now, if you're looking for it to be functional, then any pot or planter can be used. But if you're looking for it to be aesthetically pleasing, then you could go right out and use your natural flair and design the whole area. But being productive and functional and easy is of paramount importance. Now, what I really like about this range from miracle Grow is the fact that all the packaging for these products is 100% recycled products and the bags themselves that hold the compost are 30% recycled so you're not only doing your bit for the planet but you're also being able to grow your own foods organically as well not only that all of the products within the packaging is all plant-based and it is totally organic it's safe for pets children and the environment and it's even some of the products are even able to be used by vegans also so some of the products that i'm going to be using today will be the all-purpose organic compost it will also be the fruit and vegetable compost we also have some feeds here that I'm also going to be using, which is like a pelleted all-purpose feed. And we've got a concentrated liquid performance organic feed for flowers and vegetables. So we're going to be using these products in this part of the garden. Now, being the beginning of April, we can't just put the seedlings straight out into the patio area because if we have any frost, it's going to kill them straight away. So if you have a windowsill or a propagator, then you can sow some seeds and use those to be able to bring them on. It's important that we look at being able to manage and plan for our future crops. In such a small area like this, it's really important that we get value for our space. And with that in mind, we need to consider the types of crops we're going to grow. We need to grow high value crops so that we can get something to eat on a daily basis, but also something that would normally cost a lot more in the shops. The following crops would make good candidates for our garden because they're relatively expensive in the shops. And these will be things like herbs, salad greens, cucumbers, tomatoes, uh, dwarf French beans. We could put in some small zucchinis or courgettes, whatever you want to call them. And um, even we could grow one little tub of container potatoes. And depending on how much light you get in this garden, you could even grow chilies and even fruit like strawberries. Think about vegetables that would be part of a meal or even the meal itself. And I would even consider, like I said, potatoes because they can grow really well in a container. It takes up no space at all and you can get quite a few meals out of each container. Uh, typically I get about 15 pound spuds out of one of these containers. 
So now we know exactly what we're going to grow, we can start to sow our vegetables. Now whether you're buying plugs from a garden centre or growing your own from seed, um, it's pretty much the same thing. But what we can do now is take some of the miracle Grow Performance Organics compost and we can fill a seed tray. Sow your seed very thinly and cover with a fine layer of vermiculite or compost. Use these tips to make your progress a little easier. Number one, pre-water your compost because then you don't wash the seed out when you're watering. Number two, sow your seeds thinly and no more than twice the depth of the seed. And number three, cover with a fine layer of vermiculite or compost which will block out the light but allow those seeds to germinate easily. Once you've sown your seeds, place it on a south-facing windowsill or in a propagator to germinate. Seeds usually require 21 degrees Celsius or 70 degrees Fahrenheit to germinate. Chilies, however, will require 26 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. As the seeds start to germinate, it's really important to pay attention to the light levels. Now, living in the UK, we are usually overcast or the sun is very low, so light levels aren't great. Now, as seeds germinate, they will stretch looking for light, and this gives you leggy seedlings. Now, if you notice this, it's really important to take action and prevent those seedlings going leggy. So you may have to apply some supplement lighting in order to keep your seedlings nice short and stocky. Seedlings are now at the potting on stage but it's too early for them to go out just yet so what we need to do is transplant these seedlings into their own pots. Simply take some miracle Grow Performance Organics multi-purpose compost and place this into a pot. Create a hole in the centre. Once you've done that you can literally use a pencil, grab your little plant by its leaf and lift the plant out and place it into the hole that has been created for it. Firm the soil around this plant then give it a little water and allow it to drain. Once it's fully drained you can place it back onto the windowsill or onto the propagator and you simply continue with the rest of your plants. When the weather is conducive to plants being outside then this is typically around the middle of May for us. We can take our plants and we can fill the desired containers that we're going to use with some miracle Grow all-purpose compost and we can transplant our seedlings or our little plants out into our containers where they will continue to grow for the rest of their time. The great thing about this compost from miracle Grow. Performance Organics is the fact that it will feed your plants for the next three months so you're not going to have to feed lots but as the plants start to grow they're going to use that this plant and we will then require to feed those plants in order to keep them healthy. Now we've planted our plants we now need to take into consideration where we want to put them around the garden. Consider the lighting of the garden. Now things like leafy greens don't require as much light as uh, something like a fruiting tomato. So leafy greens take an indirect light so they can be put more in a, a shadier area of the garden. Whereas things like your cucumbers and your tomatoes, those fruiting plants, well they require more sun. So put them in the sunnier position of the garden. Another thing to do is to consider the size of the mature plant because a lot of new gardeners they tend to plant things way too close to seedlings they think that oh well, that's enough space and then they don't realize that when these plants mature they get much much bigger so consider your spacings and tip number three is if any of these plants require a support structure now's the time to get it in because by putting in a cane for a tomato, for example, if you wait until that plant matures a bit, you're going to damage the root system doing it. So get them in now and then that support structure is there ready for the plant to utilise as is required. Now for feeding, the compost that we used is going to feed for the next three months. 
but as that starts to get used up or if we start to see any signs that the plants are struggling for feed then we're going to use a couple of other products now we have a couple of options we have a granular feed that we can uh, use and this is good for all plants including vegetables and you can simply just scatter this across the surface and if we have anything else that we want and to get a feed in straight away we can use a liquid feed also and the good thing about the liquid feed is we can use that as a foliar spray and this will help to get those nutrients into the plants much much quicker the great thing about this is it's all been tested with science and it will show visible results in seven days the other thing is it's pet child and bee friendly and as a beekeeper that's something i am uh, happy to hear now for watering your containers well this is going to be one of your biggest tasks watering containers takes up some time but it's well worth it now there are things you can do in order to uh, make life easier like mulching and what have you which i've spoken about in other videos but the main thing about containers is that they heat up in the sun so they are going to dry up and of course they don't have lots of surrounding soil around them so this will be one of your biggest tasks as time goes on now is keeping those containers moist at all times now there are lots of ways you can do this you can use a watering can or a hose pipe uh, i'm lucky here i have uh, a tap straight in this area so i can use water direct from that but if you want to go hands free here you could even set up a drip irrigation system and run just little drip tubes to all of the planters here with harvesting, a garden like this is limited in space. So we need to apply some uh, tactics that can make our harvest go a little bit longer. An example of this would be uh, lettuce leaves. If we were to grow cut and come again lettuce, this would give us future harvests after we've already harvested one lot of leaves. Another way would be to remove the outer leaves of lettuce that isn't cut and come again. Now what this does, it allows the plant to continue growing but we have a harvest of leaves that we can use in a salad or some meal. Another tip here is to pick vegetables as they become ripe, especially things like tomatoes and cucumbers because if you allow a ripe fruit to stay on the plant then and that plant thinks its job is done and it's going to turn to seed and it will end that plant's life whereas if you're constantly harvesting those fruits it will continue to keep growing right up to the last frost although it's really early in the year due to the timelines and the schedules that we needed to be able to get this video out to you guys it's hard to show you what the full of extent of this garden is going to be like and and the harvest that we're going to have from it however over the course of the year we will come back and look at how this garden is doing and um, that way you can see the benefits that you can grow nutrient dense foods in a small 10 by 10 patio area you don't have to be limited by size so in this 10 by 10 small patio as you can see we've got loads of fruit and veg in here you can pretty much grow loads of different meals in such a small space and it looks nice and we're able to still relax out here and we've got strawberries chilies we've got sunflower seeds if we want to have sunflower seeds later on there is radish spring onions there are lots of different salad leaves there's chinese lettuce leaves we've got some broccoli or calabrese oregano we've got three tomato plants here We've got some chives, cucumber, more salad leaves because as I said earlier on, salad is expensive to buy. We've got some chard. We have a bucket of potatoes, some peas, some sweet corn and some sage. So there's lots going on in this garden now that later on we are going to be able to harvest and eat. And considering this was such a bland spot, now it's become quite relaxing because of all the plants around here we'll get some lighting up and we can actually utilize this space and eat from it as well so if you have a patio garden 
there's no reason why you can't be growing your own foods. I hope you've enjoyed this video of growing vegetables on your patio or balcony with Miracle Grow Performance Organics. Their motto is if you love your plants, they will love you back. So if you want to learn to grow twice as big organically, then pop down to the description below and check out all the links for further information. If you've got value from this video, you can subscribe here. And when you've done that, this is the next video you should watch, which will show you how to retain moisture in the containers that you're using. I'm Tony O'Neill, and this is Simplify Gardening, where I show you how to garden in a simpler way. Remember folks, you reap what you sow, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.